Hello, everyone. Dr. Chris Martinson back here with you. Today, we are going to be talking about, well, the Federal Reserve a little bit here because um, they just raised rates again, and this is going to create an enormous amount of difficulty. And of course, that's what they're here to do. They're here to crash the economy. They're not going to call it that, but they're definitely trying to do that. They have some deep trouble they've gotten in. I've been covering this for, well, a long time. You want to go back 10, 15 years, you can find me talking about the Federal Reserve and the mistakes they were making back then that we could easily predict are going to get us where we are today. This is going to be a bad recession. I'm talking kind of like the savings and loan crisis times the great financial crisis on steroids. Why? Because of all the money printing that the Fed has done. That is going to, there's a, there's bills to pay on that, right? And so let's go there. Let's talk now about this today, the Fed raising the rates. <clears throat> First off though, before I get there, Hey, y'all said clearly when I asked you what you wanted me to focus on, there was quite a strong strain of financial coverage, which I love doing the financial stuff. Because if you hated the 99.95% survival rate of COVID, you are going to really dislike what happens when this next economic crisis comes along. And it's really a monetary crisis, going to be a fiscal crisis and a financial crisis all wrapped into one. At any rate, thank you so much for giving the feedback. I am reading all of it. We will also be talking about... Uh, the farm and the gut cows and the chickens. We'll have Evie back on. She's all rested up after our trip recently to Texas, hanging out with the FLCCC docs down there and um, talking through a variety of issues. So <clears throat> what do we got to go on here? Let's talk about this. Hey, the uh, Federal Reserve raised rates again, a quarter point today to five and a quarter percent. And um, the Federal Reserve, they say here in the AP, <clears throat> let's fact check them. Yeah, I done AP. Terrible fact checking. You, you do okay on this stuff, but the fact checking, you really drop the ball on that stuff. <coughs> okay. Um, they say the Fed reinforced its fight against high inflation by raising its key interest rate a quarter point, highest level in 16 years. It's been a good long run. As I pointed out in a recent episode, that good long run actually was monetary vandalism as the Federal Reserve. Well, they just pushed the cost of money pretty much to zero. That created all sorts of mischief everywhere as investors, institutions, pensions, individuals all were forced to yield seek and chase yields into increasingly dodgy ideas. And now those ideas are going up in smoke. All right. Um, old reliable Jim Cramer, you want to, he does it again. He's just, he's got the knack for being dead wrong quite often. He said, Earlier uh, today, he said, today the Fed is going to pivot and markets are going to have a rally like never before. I'm the most bullish I've been in decades. And here's the actual how markets finished out because the Fed did not pivot. They actually raised rates again. All right. Um, this is, of course, to put it in context here, we can see different rate hike cycles that we got drawn to loud. Uh, here was a rate hike cycle that came up and they stopped raising rates. It was flat for a while. And then, oh, no, you know, there's a recession. So they cut rates. Again, they went through a very long, slow, protracted quarter point at a time rate cycle, got up here, held for a while, then, oh no, a recession, and they cut. This is the monetary vandalism here. They started to raise rates a bit here. It did not work out, and they had to begin cutting again, even before COVID came, which is this little blop right here, and then they smashed it all the way to zero, and here we are again. So the only question is, how long do they hold flat, and how long before we see a recession? The answer is, Probably not all that long. I see lots of recession indicators coming up now. Interesting, if we combine this, what the Fed said, with um, the looming question of the U.S. government potentially defaulting on its debt. Not willingly, but there'll be some sort of a cat fight between Republicans and Democrats, and somehow the debt ceiling won't get raised. Jerome Powell today on the 3rd of May was asked about that particular thing. Of course, he's a monetary side person, not a fiscal side person. So anyway, he weighed in helpfully and he said, from our standpoint, it's essential that the debt ceiling be raised in a timely way and that a failure to do so would be unprecedented and lead to all kinds of financial mischief. He was soft pedaled a bit, but no, people, it'll be a calamity if that happens. I mean, just shockwaves, so 9.8 Richter scale kind of stuff. Pretty nasty. Now, I have been talking about that particular thing. This is uh, part two that I just put out on May 2nd. So this came out for my subscribers. We've only been chatting about it for a little less than a day now. And um, 
and I've just covered here's what happens if the U.S. defaults on its debt. You should think that through. And it probably won't happen. Brinksmanship, they'll get there, won't happen. But what if it does? Sooner or later, someday it will happen, and you really need to understand what might happen and how to be prepared. If you do not have a membership at Peak Prosperity, I invite you to come here uh, to this URL or just wander to peakprosperity.com, find the membership at the top, come on over and join. Because you know what I do? I think about these things every day, all day, and I apply my thinking to these particular issues of the day, and I help decode them. So I'm really, I'm here to save you time. And of course, we also have an incredible community of people. Almost every single day now, at least Monday through Friday, I'm putting out daily content at my website for my subscribers. So I invite you to come and be part of that. Now, carrying on with this story, look at this. Here's what the Fed says. They always say this. They say, oh, we have this twin mandate, you know, our focus remains squarely on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices. <laughs> yeah, uh, for the American people. Yeah, no, the, the American people are not on the Federal Reserve's priority list. Their priorities are making sure their banker buddies make fat, risk-free profits, which is what they're doing by paying interest on excess reserves or reserve balances. And two, they like to have the stock market go up because that helps, well, goal one. So Federal Reserve in priority, goal one, make sure the banks are happy and profitable. Goal two, make sure that the financial asset markets, including stocks and bonds, are pumped up. Goal three would be making sure commodity markets don't send any wrong signals. So how does the Fed do that? Well, I have uh, episodes out about that as well, about how the Fed and their proxies go about manipulating the markets in the futures markets now. And then somewhere way down the list is the American people. But of course, they have to say this. This is what they care about. Now, if the Fed, if I'm right, if the Fed has cared more about Wall Street and private equity and all of these other people who constitute, you know, basically the top 0.1% of, of, of the social economic strata, well, that would be in the data, wouldn't it? I mean, if they were really about promoting maximum employment and stable prices, we would see high, high employment and we would see low prices. What do we see instead? This is what the Fed has created, a maximum wealth gap. This is the reverse Robin Hood function. They steal from the poor or the many and give to the few. Look at this. This is uh, looking at how much wealth exists. This is from the uh, awesome WolfStreet.com. Wolf Richter, great guy, puts good together really nice charts. This is the wealth disparity monitor. This is wealth per household in dollars. So if you're in the top 0.1%, you got about 140 million bucks in the household. Look at that. They went from 40 million to 140 million. So that's a fat $100 million gain per household here for the top 0.1%. The next 1% didn't fare quite as well, but they went from 10 million to maybe 20 million or so. Um, the 2 to 10%, well, they're, they're, they're way down here somewhere. And, and then this is the bottom 90%, this green, this whole green thing down here. Um, that, 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 well, no. That next green, that, that that's next 40%. That just gets us to the 50% mark. You can't even see the bottom 50%. That's what he says here. Bottom 50%, no wealth, really aren't visible here on this chart. This is what the Fed has been doing since 2000 with their first bailout of the American economy called the put, the Greenspan put. Put, put a put under the market in trading terms so that it put a floor on it. And so since they've done that, Obviously, those able to feast at the Fed's trough have done spectacularly well um, and have increased their household wealth by 100 million, 100 million. So that's what the Fed actually does. And if they really cared about full employment, it's true. The unemployment figures look OK, but that's because the full employment is a denominator numerator kind of a story. And so it turns out that the people you would be dividing by, how many people are in the workforce we have the lowest labor force participation rate in 46 years. So it makes employment look stronger than it is because millions and millions and millions of people are not in the labor force. And that makes it look like more people on a percentage basis are employed. So the Fed, I think, is looking kind of at the wrong statistics here. I don't think they've got a good beat on it because they are looking at the actual employment rate as reported by the government, and, and it's fraudulently um, understated because 
we have this really ridiculously low labor force participation rate. And one of the reasons we may have one of those that is because maybe there's fewer people in the labor force. Ed Dowd, I believe, gets this right. There is a huge amount of missing numbers of missing people here due to the damage from the holy shot. Uh, and, and I mean, it's millions. It's, it's just two and a half, maybe almost three million, depending how you count, of people who are now missing from the labor force. So that's the story I have for you today. The Fed raised rates and it's going to create a recession. How bad is the recession going to be? I think it could be really bad. I want you to be prepared for that mentally financially. Make sure that you have some dry powder, save up for a rainy day. Some rainy days are coming in this story. It's just how it's going to be, unfortunately. Plant a garden and remember, it didn't have to be this way. See you next time.